hi everyone and welcome back welcome to my another brand new video and in this video we are going to talk about code smells so first of all you might have heard about this term in the development career what are the code smell i mean in programming language code smell is just a synonym uh, that uh, that possibly index indicates the deeper problem in your code okay according to martin flower a code smell is surface indicating that uh, okay it just not it just something wrong with your code in deeper down okay because your code may work like here this function is number and is not boolean may work as expected but this is this the right way code smell doesn't mean that your code is problematic and your production or your application will crash not something like this but it is just a score in which you can write the code in a little bit better way so that we are going to discuss here let's talk about this is number function can i just write this is number function in simple way function is number and here i can take a input and here we can just simply say is a type of type of test if this is equal equal to number so the same function can be written like this additionally we are writing two lines of code similarly here this is the function to check if this is a boolean or not right same function i can write simply is not boolean test and type of test not equal equal to boolean so this earlier way i was writing something like this right so the same thing same six or seven lines of code can be written like this so this is not something wrong but this is uh what you can say is a code smell we will talk about uh, these written statement i mean or more examples which are explaining the code as code smells and you can avoid having that kind of thing in your code string add so what it is doing is uh here we are trying to return in multiple statement right if uh, number string is equal to equal to not a number while doing a percent return zero otherwise return value how can i write the same function in one line let's try to see this because here we are doing a really simple case if it's not a number then return zero otherwise uh, return the value string add and here it is a number string which you can parse so here i can write the whole statement in just as one single value if it is a number string what happened otherwise you can return zero okay so the same code we i can write it like this here we don't need to check the percent and then value is not a number and then return zero if it doesn't pass then obviously return zero so this if else and multiple return statement can be written in just a one single line now another example we can talk about is uh, using this variable so other interesting examples we can talk about is uh, let's say this is the example right here we are doing a for each loop uh and here we uh, have assigned this context into that variable and then we are doing that dot cut okay really strange uh, way of doing it i mean before we don't know how to use uh, call apply bind or arrow function this is how we were doing it but in the today's world this is really a code smell and how we can fix it we can assign i mean we can actually bind the whole function for each function this callback function to this so or whatever you do you will have a same scope of this whatever is available here same scope of this will be available here also and other than that uh, you can actually do uh, you can actually pass the params and you can pass the this context and in the today's world you can actually use arrow function also so let's try to do it with arrow function if you want to set it person and here you don't need to to do the bind i mean it's, it's actually simplifying the code by not doing a dot bind or doing by not assigning this to that and then using that variable here that just a one way earlier way was to do the bind and here also what we can do is we can actually pass this second parameter to override the context so this is also another way of doing it 
Now, uh, another example, I have a couple of more examples of, let's say, the broken promise. How we are writing the callback and promises and how we can improve that. So, let's try to play with a little bit on the promises side. So, let's say this is the code I'm writing. How can I improve this code a little bit? Because here I'm calling get user and there is a callback I'm passing and once this is done, I'm returning a callback. I mean, this code uh, looks fine. It's once the promise is resolved, it will return a callback promise. That means you will get the response and then you can return the user. How can we tweak this and can a little bit make it a little bit better? Forget about dollar HTTP. It, it can be any other library which is helping you to get the data. So get users. Instead of doing this through the callback, I can actually write a simple. Let's say dollar HTTP is some library dot get. And here I'm doing a users and then I can call get user and because this get user is returning a promise get users dot then it's a function which is giving me the response and then I can just do is the same thing so both has their own way of reading it and writing it but i think this is more simplified it is returning the promise and i can just do a dot that there is no need to mix up the callback with this similarly uh, let's see another example where we are mixing the callback and the promises i hope this is clear this is the original example get employee okay that is returning a promise and then you are doing a get data which is returning a callback and get employee dot then and returning the callback and this is the fine what are the code smells uh, do you see here get employee this is fine that it is returning a promise we are fine with that but this get data is calling this instead of doing this so this is the original code i will try to tweak this code a little bit original code and this is what i will be changing it so the first function looks fine in this get data instead of doing this i can return get and i mean there is no need to write this intermediate function but there is already code written and we are just cleaning up this now get data is something which is returning a promise right because get employee is returning a promise get data will be returning a promise then get data dot then and we will write a function and here console.log response or whatever the variable is response dot employee so look at the both the examples i mean i think this is more cleaner way of doing it we don't need to mix the callback so this is really a code smell this is returning a promise there is already existing function so we are rewriting it but we are returning the same promise and now it is a promise we can do a dot then so we are losing the context of how you are playing with this dirty callback thing here i mean this is really not written the right way it is taking a callback and then you are waiting for a promise once promise is resolved you are returning a callback what if this promise is rejected then also you need to take the scenario i mean the code works fine but it's a smell in your code which you can fix it by rewriting and doing it a little bit better way of doing it okay so these are just some examples okay these are these these are the things which are code smells and we do these things at many places but we can avoid them uh, the last example of code smell is just a simple thing is these are the two functions and we wanted to return something once both the tasks are done right so either we do it like this there is nothing wrong but you are actually blocking first this will execute then this will execute and then you are returning something instead of that you can actually do a promise dot all and you can wait for all the promises to be resolved and then you are done right so this is just another way of uh, doing the same thing because here you are waiting already until these both the promises are resolved so you can just do the promise dot all